that's the system, right? So if you're able to create a system that adapts itself, right? Mm -hmm. It means that it doesn't need you. It's able to recognize problems internally and automatically fix them. Okay. So for example, um, I think the problem a lot of us entrepreneurs have is you think the business relies on you. You're only there to set the vision, the identity, the mission, the culture, but it's supposed to stand without you. And eventually it will maybe not be exactly as you wanted it to look, but that's why you create a system. I say all the time, it's like raising a child. Okay. For the first seven years, you're laying down the foundation. By the mm -hmm. time it's eight years old, you're laying down systems so it operates without you. We have to find a way as entrepreneurs to phase ourselves out. You have to make yourself irrelevant so the company no longer needs you, and that's how you survive. Hi everybody, you're welcome to Just For Women Africa and my name is Ola Lekon. I'm also the founder of Just For Women Africa and today we are at Skin Goma here in Accra, Ghana. Mm -hmm. We have with us with Violet um, Apampin. Awo Amwabin. Awo Apampin. And uh, she's the founder of Skin um, Goma. Really lovely name. How did you come from the name Skin, Skin Goma? How did I come with the name Skin Goma? So I started the company about eight years ago okay. and I started it because I had come back from school from because I'd been in Canada, I'd been in the US, so I didn't really know much about the poverty gap in Africa. Okay. So I came back and I came back as a banker with procurement and then I really wanted to help because you're sitting in traffic mm -hmm. and you see like the the gap between people's livelihoods and I wanted to help. But okay. how am I gonna help exactly? So anyway, fast forward, um, I got this thing on my lip doing have a time always splits okay and my friends and nothing was working and i mean mind you i just came back from abroad thinking i have all the creams and everything and nothing was working my friends like why don't you just use shea butter i'm like shea butter you know like as it like really compares to the other creams and i finally <laughs> finally used the shea butter and then within three days no scarring nothing and i was like wow so this one ingredient mm -hmm. versus all these different creams which have all these different ingredients so i started doing more research into it and i was like oh my god i have found the key and the answer to perfect skincare now as i did my research about the ingredients i was using mm -hmm. i realized that traditionally as africans we actually eat our skincare but i didn't understand that that was what skin gourmet meant at that time okay when i first came up with the name skin gourmet meant essentially high palate skincare okay but then as time evolved and we basically merged our company uh, mission and vision and merged it with the tradition of ghana and what's in the west we realized that no it's high palate edible skincare skin gourmet <laughs> Oh, skin gourmet. I love the name skin gourmet. I mean, when I first saw like, wow, what a beautiful name. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you've been doing this for the last eight years mm -hmm. and um, having to come back from Canada, had to set up your own business mm -hmm. and all. What has been some of the challenges you, work, you have to overcome to um, set up your own business? I think um, pretty much the biggest problem or issue or challenge was self. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people want to say that it's finance, but I started my company with $45. A lot of people find that very difficult to believe, but when you have a big dream in your heart, right, and you just know, like, you know, I didn't start my dream and say, oh, this is my business plan, this is my, I didn't do any research. I just, I just took my 145 Ghana seats out of the bank at the time, <laughs> went to Makola, got my raw materials, called my relatives, you know, I'm going to do this. And they all thought I was joking, by the way, they didn't think I was serious. And then I made my formulations, made my logo on um, power, a PowerPoint at the time. Okay. I printed it out from the printer, my label stuck it on the bottle and then had three containers went to church and I said God have you seen my one room <laughs> I need a company but then I realized it wasn't the financial part you know if you really want to do something and you're really driven in your heart to do it mm -hmm. you'll find every single way the obstacle is where you think exactly. so if you believe that I don't have enough you won't have enough if you do if you believe that this is going to be a problem I can't overcome you can't overcome it so one thing I had to learn was to overcome myself okay. right and realize that you're wrong stop making excuses find a different way it is possible and there's a great reward at the end of it when it's possible and even like up till now to today we still go through the same problems but you still have to remember that there is always a way okay that's nice I mean it's still up for $45 so yeah. how much is skin gourmet making now um so since 2008 the reason I say 2008 is because that's when we had our first you know accounting systems we've been able to make over $700,000 Huh? Yeah, but seven hundred thousand dollars from forty-five dollars. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. Within eight years. Um. Well, we had more than that in eight years. I'm counting from 2018, which is more about five years, not even the total eight years. Wow, that's <laughs> a lot. I need to forget about YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but there are a lot of expenses. A lot of expenses. <laughs> Wow, that's a lot of money. Okay, uh, now I'm a bit struck. About what to go to. <laughs> so eight hundred. Well, seven hundred thousand dollars and counting. Okay. But we've had grants and injections, so okay. yeah, about eight hundred thousand dollars, close to a million dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. And does that coming from the local market or your exports? 
Okay, so when I started Skin Gourmet, what I realized is for the solution to the problem which I first had, right, which is I want to help people. Mm -hmm. So when I first started with the products, it was fun making products. But then when you create your first job and you're able to pay someone, you're like, wow, I'm actually like impacting my country. So then the focus changes from just the product into how you're going to impact the economy. So boosting economic growth and creating decent jobs. How do you do that in a way that you can grab a larger market share and be able to make the most money and bring it into your country? And that's how we decided it would be export. So we take what Ghana has naturally and we maximize it, making it a premium finished product that the world can consume that is easily adaptable to different international markets. Wow, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. Wow, so, okay, so that's, that's eight years, 700K dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, so what kind of products do you make, I mean, uh, from shea butter? Okay, so that's, a lot of people also think we make just shea butter, but okay. shea butter is the one that we usually talk about because that's what people know, and that's what, that's what we started with. Okay. But we have edible butters, which can go anywhere from cocoa butter, we even have um, shea butter, of course, and then we make different mixtures with it with different oils. So we have baobab and shea butter, we have coconut and shea butter, cocoa and shea butter, hemp and shea butter. Mm -hmm. Then we have our edible oils, which are all oils from Ghana. Okay. Uh, coconut, baobab, neem, castor, moringa. Then we have um, our edible scrubs, which is formul they're formulated actually to taste. So when you use these scrubs and you actually taste and taste really good. And then we have our cleanses, which is don't eat that because I haven't figured out how to make that taste <laughs> how to make that taste good yet. And then we have what we call humble feast, which is snacks and foods that we make based off our raw ingredients. Okay. Do you have some of the products, yeah? Yes, yeah. So uh, behind you we have our hibiscus and tea tree sugar scrub, which is right here. Can we get one? Yes. Yeah. And then this is like our one of our cleansers, which is our baobab black soap. Then we have our Ghana clay mask over there. And then for example, our coconut oil is also over there. Okay. And hemp oil right there. Okay, so this is the hibiscus. Hibiscus and tea okay. scrub. So, what uh, is this for? Okay, so this is a great body and face scrub, and you can also eat it. It tastes amazing. This is, I think. Is it healthy to eat? Of course, it's healthy to eat. <laughs> but you know, the reason why I came up with this was because my sister was telling me how, you know, she's always in the bathtub and she's scrubbing her face and she gets something in her mouth and she gets worried. Okay. So I was like, so why don't we make it so that she, even if she consumes, it's perfectly fine? But of course, this is sugar based. So okay. you don't want to be scooping the whole thing and putting it in your mouth because at the end of the day, it's still sugar. But it tastes amazing and it's really easy for everyone to use. Okay. And I think this was our. This was our second scrub. The first one was baobab, and this was hibiscus. So we try to take what's naturally occurring, but we don't just replicate it as it is. We have to mm -hmm. add value and make it a bit more unique and innovative. Okay. Yeah. All right. And this is what was this? Hemp oil. Hemp oil. What yeah. do you use this for? So hemp oil is used as salad dressing. It's also used to grease your scalp. It's also used for inflammation. It's used to, for your beard, for your hair, for your skin, for your body. We try to make sure it's as pure as possible so that the consumer has more choice. Okay. Um, I think it's really weird when, like, for example, one coconut oil is put into a little bottle. Now it's makeup remover. Then it's put in another bottle. It is for swollen eyes. It's put, so it's like one product, but it has been changed into so many different things. Mm -hmm. So the consumer has to spend so much just to get different uses out of it. Exactly. So what we decided to do is make it as pure as possible and let the consumer decide what they want to use it for. Okay, that's nice, that's nice. So in all, how many products do you make? Oh wow, in all we make about 50. <laughs> We're wow. Trying, yeah, it's like the issue I'm having is like, we are just like the innovation is just too much. There's too many things you can make from it. So we've made over 50 products, but right now on the market we're working with about 25. Okay. Yeah. And the other 25 go to? Pardon? What does the other 25 go to? Is it, you say you're currently making 25? Yes. What does the other 25 go to? Oh, the other 25 is by order. So, for example, maybe we had it seasonally and mm -hmm. a, a customer comes back after a year and they're like, you know, I really like this product. I need 200 pieces. Then we do it for them. Oh, that's nice. Yes, that's, that's nice. the thing. It's very difficult for us to phase it out because once we put it on the shelf, the customer loves it. <laughs> <laughs> so then to phase it out, it's like they come back, they're like, we want it. We're just like, ah, oh, okay, I will do it for you. <laughs> well, that's nice. That's nice. Okay. Eight years in the business. What have you learned as a um, CEO running your own business as a woman in Ghana? I, I don't know how to answer that. What do you mean by what have I? Like, there, there's so much you learn every single day. I think maybe for me, um, when I meet other entrepreneurs mm -hmm. um, and you look at the same struggles we go through, yeah. I think the most important thing is what your motive is, right? Like a lot of people get into business because they want to make money, they want to see it as a means to an end. But I find that that is not enough to keep you going because it is hard. Like, okay, maybe that's what I learned. It is hard. Like, it is so hard, you cannot begin to fathom how hard it is to be an entrepreneur because it's, everything is on you at the end of the day. Exactly. You don't make any excuses. You don't put the responsibility on anybody else. If you fail, it's just you, which means that your company, its well-being, its culture, everything that you're growing depends on you and how you're affecting other people with it. And you have to be so careful about that because that means you need to watch yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. Even though you have to watch yourself to build the business, the business is not about you 
and that's a very difficult thing for for people to kind of tackle even mm -hmm. though it's all on you mm -hmm. it's not about you and so that's constant self-development constant self-growth constant um, constantly coming over challenges and then also understanding that you can never blame anybody for your problems and that if you do have an issue it's up to you to fix it mm -hmm. but it's not about what you're getting out of it it's about how you're impacting other people okay I'm sure you've come to a point well over the last eight years and I while well, doing your business you've come to a point where you're like man I just need to forget about this business and just forget the whole about it can, yeah can, what, what can you give us an example of an issue you encountered and just felt like you know what this is not worth it oh, yes, <laughs> yes I mean to be honest, um, I think, you know, especially when you're working with people, okay. you know, um, we have to align what your vision is with what other people's vision is. And sometimes the difficulty is that people don't have the same vision as you. And so you feel like giving up because it's like you sacrifice so much. You've put so much on your shoulders because you see yourself going one way. But people are really concerned with themselves. You know, like it, it, as much as you might have an outward view of wanting to help, of wanting to impact, you have to understand that people have their own problems. And they don't they won't be able to see as far as you're seeing or see beyond themselves because they have so much to deal with personally. The problem with that is then it feels like you're all alone and it's difficult to carry that because you feel like people are being selfish. But you have to then turn around and realize that that's not it. Again, it's you in your own head. What it is is that people have things to deal with. Exactly. And if you want to help them carry that load, you need to get beyond yourself and start feeling sorry for yourself and help them carry that load. So I think it's the um, misalignment sometimes. And one thing that happens that makes you want to give up is self-pity. And self-pity is something that you have to realize is selfish. In your, as much as it sounds weird, self-pity is selfish. And that's something that as entrepreneurs, we need to get over. If you have a bigger mission for the world or a bigger vision for the world, you have to fully understand that it is not about you, even when it becomes extremely hard for you. Well, I hope you guys are listening. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. But I hope you guys are listening. But I hope you got the message. Basically, you don't have to give up. You have to keep on struggling. Yes. Essentially, yeah. You have to keep dying. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's that's fantastic. That's fantastic. All right. So, what are you? I mean, what's a what's are one of the major challenges in upskilling your business currently? Um, again, self. I'll tell you, self again, because um, when you're building a business and you have some success or traction, mm -hmm. you start to think you're doing well. But okay. you have to realize sometimes that in that growth, you have to have the proper systems, and it's a challenge trying to conform to the world while being innovative. So as you're growing, you have to keep checking internally if you have the systems that are appropriate for what it is that you're growing. And the most challenging thing is for an African company is to build a system that continues to adapt on its own without you there. That is what I'm currently facing and I have difficulty with it. I think it's something that's ongoing for everyone. It's how do you build a system that corrects itself as it keeps growing. So it's always coming back to the drawing board always saying that even though you're doing well, even though you're not doing well, you have to come back, something is wrong. You have to keep consistently fixing and always internally um, reflecting, seeing what's going well, what's not going well, and adjusting mm -hmm. so that it can grow and not fall because the foundation is strong. That's, I do totally agree with you on that. I totally agree with that. So you're not agree with me on the rest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're, we're running. <laughs> Okay, we'll run up the interview in the next couple of minutes. Okay, okay. But I need to ask you this question, which um, a lot of entrepreneurs face, or I see all the time. Yes. But people come up with businesses they create, mm -hmm. then, of course, we're not going to be on Earth forever. We fade out. Yes. And the businesses die with it. Yes. What's your plan for that? Well, that's, that's the system, right? So if you're able to create a system that adapts itself, right, mm -hmm. it means that it doesn't need you. It's able to recognize problems internally and automatically fix them. Okay. So, for example, um, I think the problem a lot of us entrepreneurs have is you think the business relies on you. You're only there to set the vision, the identity, the mission, the culture. But it's supposed to stand without you. And eventually, it will maybe not be exactly as you wanted it to look. But that's why you create a system. I say all the time, it's like raising a child. Okay. For the first seven years, you're laying down the foundation. By the mm -hmm. time it's eight years old, you're laying down systems so it operates without you. We have to find a way as entrepreneurs to phase ourselves out. You have to make yourself irrelevant so the company no longer needs you. And that's how you survive. I like that. You have to make yourself relevant so the company no, no, longer needs, no longer needs you and they can survive without you. I think that's a really powerful statement to make. I mean, if everybody entrepreneur thinks that way, then businesses would you know, yes. survive from generation to generation to come. And exactly. And that's why I said to you, it's very important that you don't think of yourself as much because you're really relevant. You're just here to set something. You give it away. <laughs> But the problem is we build on ourselves and that's why you see things like self-pity always me. It's all irrelevant because it has nothing to do with you. It's about you setting something that impacts people and then you let it go.
Wow, that's really powerful. I hope everybody <laughs> got to hear that. I mean, you have to make yourself relevant for your business to grow. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get to the next question. Um, eight years in business, what is it actually like running a business as a woman in Ghana? I think it's great. I mean, I'm not, listen, I understand people say that women are not supposed, it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. Let me, okay, I think for me, it's the timing, right? The timing is perfect. Right now, there's a Me Too movement. Mm -hmm. There's so many, and black woman, African, oh. This is the best time. In fact, it's, it's worse to be a man right now <laughs> than a woman. So for me, um, I think it's great. Um, especially like in my country, Ghana, uh -huh. the institutions are really helpful. Like okay. FDA, AGI, um, Africa's Business Heroes. Like they actually are here to empower women now. It's like one of the United Nations development goals. Like right now, women, we are being supported. So for me, this is the best time to be a woman. <laughs> and African on top. And black. <laughs> But I like what you said because everyone I interview says the same thing. Man, it's a fantastic time to be <laughs> So what you see just saying it just, you know. It reinforces it's everything. fantastic, yeah. Like there's nothing to complain about, right? Now it's all good. <laughs> but men, don't worry. Well, we still stand strong. Still stand strong. Thank you for helping us guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Alright, so what's this feature for skin gomer? Uh, the future for Skin Gourmet is uh, get system building. I think that's the most important part. Building sustainable systems that can keep the, the company running mm -hmm. and moving forward. And of course, more innovation. So right now, um, we are slowing down so much on growth and scaling mm -hmm. and making sure that we're just building systems that can sustain that growth and support the weight of which is going to carry, which is going to be heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. So you have to make sure the foundations are solid. I do agree with you. It shows that at least you have um, your business in, in the right setting. Yes. Think about the foundation and Thank think you. about the future. Mm -hmm. um, it's really great. Okay. So as we round up the interview, what's your advice to women out there who uh, want to set up their own business, but they feel it's a man's world and they feel that they get harassed by men sexually, they feel that getting finances to start up your business is, a, is an issue, yeah. all those things. Well, what's, what's your advice to women out there in Ghana mm. and in Africa? I would say you have to decide what defines you. Are you defined by what other people can tell you can do? Or are you going to look at every problem as an opportunity or every challenge as an open door? Because at this point in time, where you can just grab any opportunity, everyone's willing to help you, there is no excuse. Like I said, there is no self-pity. If you really want to do it, you'll find a way and make sure that you own it in your own way. And also make sure whatever problem you're solving is a real problem that bothers you. If it bothers you that much, you'll find a way around it. I like that. Is it something that bothers you, you find a way around yes. it? Wow, that's really an amazing interview. I'm loving it. But unfortunately, it has come to an end. <laughs> All right. So to our viewers out there who are watching, who um, love the interview, who have seen the videos, your pictures as we're going along, mm -hmm. and um, they'd like to get in touch with Skin Gomer, mm -hmm. make some orders, what's the contact details they can reach out to them? So, I'm in the box. <laughs> SkinGourmet.com <laughs> Go by website or oh, we're on Instagram Skin Gourmet GH Verified Blue Tick So you'll see us on there and you can just contact us for information send us emails Violet at Skin Gourmet that's my email info at Skin Gourmet that's for sales but the main thing is SkinGourmet.com Yeah Alright guys thanks so much for coming on the show we You're most welcome Thank you. <laughs> Skin Gourmet is the place to go to I recommend it five star product um, go to the website mm -hmm. SkinGourmet.com place your orders you ship worldwide you? Yes we do Yep so Any country in the world. Anywhere in the world, wherever you are, Alaska, Japan, Cherries, Skin Gourmet will get to you. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, do not forget to subscribe. Um, tell a friend who knows a friend about It's Just for Women Africa. And from the um, Violet, founder of Skin Gourmet. Bye. Nice meeting you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>